you are about to learn what you can do with these besides using this. So watch out. We're going to talk about hand tools and how cool they are to make stuff with. Yeah! Give yourself a hand. Up here on the tool wall, we have several different types of saws. These ones here on the bottom are going to be what you're using most of the time. These hand saws are called pull saws and they're great at doing cross cuts, going across the grain. See the lines in the wood are going this way and they're great at cutting across those lines. These larger saws up here, um, they are great at cutting with the grain. They're going in the same direction as those lines as you see here. Uh, so those bigger saws are made for doing that. We won't be doing very long cuts like that very often. So those won't be used too often. When we first get started sawing, we want to have the saw blade at a little bit of an angle here. If we're starting it with it perfectly flat like that, it's gonna be wanting to jump around and not stay very well. So we're gonna keep a little bit of an angle like that, going upwards or downwards like this if you're a little shorter than me. And then our other hand, be it your left hand or your right hand, whichever handed you are, it's gonna stay over here. And we're gonna grab the piece of wood with our fingers, and we're gonna have our pointer finger up. So put your hand on the piece of wood, and then point to your friend across the room over there for a moment, and then put the saw, line it up on the saw, on the, the line uh, with exactly where you want it to be with a little bit of an angle, and then your other finger is gonna stay up here. And I like to put my fingernail against it so that when I'm sawing, this hand, my left hand, is gonna stay perfectly still, and it's just gonna be there to kinda guide the saw. It's gonna help stop me from tipping the saw blade over like this and making a crooked cut. So as we get started, I'll go nice and slow to get a little notch going. Once, once I got a little notch there, I can move a little bit faster. And my finger on my left hand is staying perfectly still. It's the fingernail is rubbing in against the piece of wood. So it's staying nice and perfectly smooth. And that one hand is doing all the work. My right hand is doing all the work. And this is not a race. You're not trying to cut through the piece of wood as fast as possible. You're trying to make a nice, perfectly straight cut. If you're going super fast, your cut is not gonna look very good and it's going to be a crooked cut. At the end, I slow down a little bit so that that last little piece doesn't snap and break off. I wanna cut through that last piece, not break it off. And you'll see there, I cut that off. And look at that cut. You take your time, go real slow. And with a little bit of practice, you're gonna have a nice straight cut like that at a perfect 90 degree angle. So when I'm sawing, I wanna keep everything nice and straight all the way from my shoulder down to my hand, perfectly straight with that saw blade. If I have my elbow out here, that's not gonna to wanna to go straight and you'll see that that blade is bending right there. It's not going to go straight. It's not gonna cut straight. And it's gonna be really hard. You're gonna be forcing the tool. And if you're forcing the tool, you're gonna to be more likely to slip and hurt yourself and cut yourself or break something and mess up your project. Um, so keep your arm nice and straight using one hand all the way straight from your shoulder all the way down to your hand. Straight arms means straight cuts. And you can see that cut turning out pretty straight because I'm keeping everything straight. We also have these coping saws here. Coping saws are great at doing curved cuts. Um, so they can make little cuts like this and they have a little blade like this. So we're gonna see that right now. Uh, all the same rules apply, keeping your fingers away from those blades for all these saws. Um, but with this coping saw, uh, you can do some other cool things as you'll see. 
All right, so here we have a coping saw. The blade is very thin, so as we go, we can kind of turn it as we go. Um, so when we're cutting this, we still want our arm to be in a nice straight line. Uh, the only difference is that I can turn my wrist as I go. It's all in the wrist. That's all I'm gonna do. Everything else, still a nice straight line all the way from my shoulder down to my hands, just like the other saws. As I saw here, everything else is the same. I'm simply twisting my wrist as I go. And you can see that piece will get cut out just by twisting the wrist. If you are ending up bending this blade at all and things are starting to bend there, uh, and move, that is not a good thing. Uh, we don't want to bend those blades because they will break rather easily. Keep those blades nice and straight. If you are doing something like that, you can see that blade is bending, that's very, very bad. An important thing to keep in mind as we use this coping saw and we turn it, now the blood bubble is over here to the left of the saw because the teeth are pointing this way. So as you're going this way now, we want to make sure nobody is in this area over here to our left. And we're not going to be going and swiping left on somebody and hitting them. You will also be using hammer and nail in here. So we have a practice bucket of nails here and this is our practice stump here. When you're getting going using a hammer and nail, we'll use one hand to hold the nail Get it started with a couple taps so that it doesn't move anymore. We can't knock it out. And once you've got that going, we can keep going with the hammer. When we're hitting with the hammer, it is important that the hammer is coming straight down on the nail. You're going to bend the nail if your hammer is leaning in any direction. Uh, and if it's bent like that, you're not going to be able to get in. As soon as you bend the nail, stop hitting it. You're going to want to straighten it out and see if you can fix that. And now you can keep going. This is gonna take some practice. Try it out, have some fun practicing hitting nails. Um, and to get a nail out, we put it like so with the back side, the claw side of the hammer. And then we just pull the top of the handle in this direction. And it's gonna rotate there and hopefully pull out your nail. All of these tools have blades. Uh, these are chisels. They're basically a sharp piece of metal at the end here that will cut off pieces of wood. And they come in different sizes. These will seldomly be used. Uh, and when they are used, the teacher will always be present to watch you. This is a box cutter. Uh, some of the also seldomly used, but the teacher will be here to watch you use these. These you guys will be using a lot. These two are called hand planes. And uh, we'll look in, in those in just a second. And this is a similar tool called a spoke shave. These hand planes, just like the great planes of America, are great at making things flat. Because the great plains of America, that central part of America where all the buffalo are, are nice flat areas. These tools also make things flat. So you can see here after sawing this piece of wood, it's not perfectly flat here. So we can put it in the vise like so. And we're gonna start off by using this block plane, which is the smaller one here. And most of the time, this is gonna be a good size for you students because it's a little bit smaller. But you can see this part here, your palm of your hand goes there. And then there's two little pads here on either side where your fingers go. And if you're holding it correctly, your hand will stay away from that blade on the bottom. That is a sharp blade. Don't touch that. Uh, it will cut you. And it has this little knob for your other hand. And holding it just like so, you'll be able to push it. And as you push it, you'll see that it's starting to shave off little pieces of wood. And as you continue to do that, it's gonna make that piece of wood flatter and flatter. The important part here is to not let this tool tip like this or like this and to start with the blade off the end of the wood and go all the way through until the blade is past the end of the wood so that you're shaving the whole piece of the wood 
not just a smaller portion of it. So again, it goes like this, pushing down so it stays nice and flat on the wood. And use your body weight so that when you're doing this, your arms don't get tired because you're probably not as strong as your super strong teacher, Mr. Gasser. With longer pieces of wood, they can be clamped in the table like so, using these holes that are in the table. Uh, this is called a bench dog. Um, and longer pieces of wood work great with the jack plane here. Again, that's a sharp blade, don't touch that. And if you're holding it correctly with one hand here and one hand here, you're gonna be safe. So we're gonna stand here. And again, starting with the blade off the end of the piece of wood, pushing down so it stays nice and flat and pushing it all the way through. And it's gonna make up these big pieces of shavings here. Um, notice that when I'm doing this, that I'm using my whole body. I'm not just trying to go with my arms. I'm gonna get tired here if I do it like so. But I'm leaning into it with my whole body. So for all these tools, Again, the bottom part is the blood bubble. We wanna stay away from that bottom blade that's sticking out of the bottom. Uh, we're gonna, when we're not using them, we'll say the blood bubble is two inches. Stay well back from that um, sharp part on the bottom of all these, these tools. Uh, and then as you're using these, as we've talked about with some of the other sharp tools, uh, the blood bubble is also going to be anywhere in front. So if this tool is going in this direction, nobody, uh, no hands, no fingers, no other people should be in this area in front of the tool because the blade is going that way. That's going to be the dangerous area for all these tools. All the adjustment knobs on all these tools that you see here, um, you might think you know what you're doing in adjusting them, but they're easy to get wrong. Please uh, ask Mr. Gasser to help before uh, adjusting any of the knobs on these tools. These same rules will apply for any other specialty tools that you might use a little less frequently, like this router plane. That is the sharp part of this tool. Don't touch it, stay away from it. The blood bubble is going to be in front of that blade if it's moving in this direction. And keep your hands on those handles so that you keep your hand out of the blade. <laughs> The first hand drill you're going to be using is a hand-powered one, and it's called a brace. They're right here on the wall, and the brace only goes with the auger bits. So these go together. This drill bit will never go in any other type of drill, and this will never have any other type of drill bit in it. Only these go together. To put the drill bit in here, uh, on every drill, we have a, a chuck which is this part here at the end, which the drill bit will go into. And if you go lefty-loosey on this, it's going to open that up. And if you go righty-tighty, you'll see the teeth in there start to close down. And that's gonna be what's gonna clamp onto the drill bit here. So you open that up so that you can fit that in there. And you might need to open it up a little bit more and it's gonna drop all the way in there. And then we're gonna go righty-tighty on that and really tighten that down. Uh, make sure it's nice and straight in there. If that's going crooked, that's not gonna be good. And you can kind of wiggle it and make sure that. Once your drill bit is lined up where you need to drill your hole, you are going to want to uh, make sure that nobody's in the blood bubble. So the end of the drill bit is the sharp part. So nobody should be in front of the drill. Imagine this coming out the backside. Nobody should be over here uh, in any place that the uh, bit could poke them and stab them. Once you got that, you're gonna line this up and put the back side of the drill against your leg or against your hip or whatever feels good. You don't wanna put it in the middle of your tummy, that's not gonna feel good because you're gonna have to push on this and kind of lean into it. So I'm putting my foot back here so I can kind of lean and put my body weight into it. And then I'm grabbing with my left hand back here so that doesn't move and my other hand is just going righty tighty, going into the wood. And as you're going, you're gonna to start to see sawdust coming out this side over here. 
Um, you wanna push firmly, not so hard that you're gonna break the piece of wood though. From, to stop this splintering from happening, or blowout as we call it, because it kind of blew out the backside, what we do whenever we drill a hole in something, we want to always have a nice uh, piece of wood behind it, some scrap piece that we can throw away, some junk piece of wood out of the scrap bin, and then we can clamp that together. And now as we drill this hole, instead of having the ability of exploding out the backside, there's no gap here so that when we drill through, we'll just continue into this other piece and not break out the backside of this piece of wood. It's an important thing that there's no gap there. If you have a little gap where you can see through like that, it's not gonna do its job and it's still gonna be able to explode out the backside. So again, for when we're using this drill, make sure that this side is against your hip or uh, your leg or something like that, not in the center of your stomach. Make sure that the drill bit is nice and straight in there and that the chuck is tight. You gotta tighten that down with your hand. And then the blood bubble for this is everywhere out in front of this drill. You should not be touching the drill bit as you're drilling, uh, making sure that nothing, uh, nobody or nothing is out in front of the drill.